Good morning, good morning, guys. We are ready to kick off Titan Talks. Thank you for joining us on a Saturday. And we are here to literally start off and bubble and really get you excited. We have Lisa Goodwin on. She is, I know Chris is going to do the introduction. I'm just going to kick us off here. You know, we are living in a time, unprecedented times, and it's really forcing us to step out of our bubble of our normal. And a lot of us now are now deciding on our recognizing, especially in the Caribbean, because we are always a couple of steps, <laughs> that's, under, that's exaggerated, behind. And recognizing that the, the digital world is alive and real, and if we were there centuries ago, we would have really carved out you know, a, a, a competitive advantage for ourselves. And I think the conversation this morning where we are going to speak with Lisa would really identify the importance of your brand, of your digital brand, of not only of your personal digital brand, but of your company as well and, and, and that entire space. So by let's get right into it, Chris, and let's... All right. So Lisa G, as she describes herself, is an, is an award-winning technologist with over 15 years of experience in the technology industry where she has successfully transformed multiple digital business models for scalability and monetization. She has worked in a leadership capacity with brand powerhouses such as MTV Networks, the NCAA, Major League Baseball, NBC Universal, and the New York Times. Lisa has an in-depth knowledge of the technology ecosystem coupled with a bold and influential nature allows her to seamlessly and strategically help companies construct roadmaps and immersive technologies that benefit their growth. Outside of the, the workplace, which I may start with now, Lisa is an avid traveler in a constant search for the perfect poker game. She looks forward to the day when her winnings will be paid out in cryptocurrency. So that's actually something that really sparked my interest and in I was speaking to you a little bit before about one, and I'll ask you to repeat it again, your, your favorite um, type of poker. And then two, we kind of delved into cryptocurrency because I think especially this week, it has been at the forefront of everyone's mind, even here in Trinidad and Tobago. So what is your favorite um, poker game? And um, where have you played? Yes. <laughs> What's well, so funny after this interview, I'm headed to the casino. Okay, okay. <laughs> Literally, my, sure. my my gambling partner just texted me and said, what time are you going to be done? We can get on the road. <laughs> um, my favorite poker game is Texas Hold'em, but I also really love Blackjack with a side bet of poker. Um, okay. That is my favorite, um, mm -hmm. for sure. I, I feel like I win the most money. Uh, and where do I play? Well, I'm in New York City, so I go to Atlantic City to play a lot, and I yeah. go to Las Vegas um, to play as well too. So I like to we, we, around. Yes, yeah, so we we in Trinidad most are uh, extremely jealous of you right now because you know a lot of us like to venture to New York, Atlantic City, Las Vegas, but we're <laughs> trapped. Our borders are closed, you know. But that's and, and I was going to say, don't be jealous of us because from what I'm told, you guys are like COVID free over there. <laughs> No, not, not so much. We've had a... Standards, yes, we are COVID by our standards, <laughs> spiking. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So, right, okay. And the second question, um, importantly, and I, I'd like to start off here because, you know, you are a uh, technology um, expert. Um, with respect to cryptocurrencies, we're speaking a little bit about that. Um, what what is your view in the technology space of cryptocurrencies, just to educate some of our viewers? Um, cryptocurrency is going to be, well, it is the new way of, of basically a digital ledger of how transactions are happening. Um, I feel like, you know, people used to say that saying that cash is king. No, cash, cash is not king anymore. I feel like the dollar holds no worth. Everything is going to be digital currency. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why I encourage so many people, um, especially my people that are in the islands that are in the Caribbean, please invest in the digital currency. Start somewhere. I know Bitcoin is so expensive right now, so it's kind of late to get on that boat, but buy some of it. Buy some of the smaller cryptocurrencies. Like right now, the hot one is Dogecoin. Get that. It is, I think it's maybe like 40 cents. 
buy a couple mm -hmm. hundred shares um, as cryptocurrency is going to be the way of our, our digital currency in the future. Mm -hmm. So right now, um, one of the, the cryptocurrencies that I really believe in um, is Ethereum. And now a lot of the big tech giants are, are hopping on Ethereum and, you know, saying like, mm -hmm. this is, this is where we're backing and this is where we're putting our money. Um, I believe like um, Elon Musk has brought up Ethereum and how Tesla will be involved. And, and I think that's why Dogecoin has went up too, because he's saying like Tesla will now accept Dogecoin or something to that effect. Um, okay. So, you know, these cryptocurrencies are really taking off. Like people are buying houses with Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, you I know, can imagine, you know. Yeah, you know go ahead. Um, again, coming back to the Caribbean, um, you, you know Gabriel a bit. Um, from Tech Beach, Lisa. And he actually bought his first NFT this week um, oh, from a wow. local Caribbean artist, um, a beautiful painting, Caribbean painting called Survivor. You know? Okay. Um, it's, it's spectacular. And, you know, I had a meeting yesterday and there is, there's a launch of a, of a Caribbean NFT exchange, you know, with some really big players happening with Nick Saloom, and 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 Gabriel and Gabriel really like being advisors. So it's you know, despite our position not being in the forefront, I could really see us with these tech, you know, dabbling with all these tech, these tech these guys. They 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 they're doing exciting things. I mean, I was so if you see this beautiful photo, you know, NFTs. Mm -hmm. So let's let's kind of segue into that and just how that can be important, especially for Caribbean artists, for Caribbean, yes. you know. And and how and, and again, you know, your expertise, as you've indicated, is is also um, talking about our brand, you know, so kind of piggybacking off of that, like, how do we, how, what would be your suggestion about establishing a, a digital brand, especially in light of all these, these kind of things happening around us? So um, it's very important to stay on the cusp of what's happening in order to really establish a digital brand. Um, because you have to know what are what are your consumers flocking to, so you have to know like what their interests are, knowing who your audience is, um, to really build out a digital space for them to 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 be able to consume with you. So mm -hmm. I really do think it's important to really know who your audience is, build some type of community space or some type of, um, if you're selling something, some type of e-commerce that is really focusing on what your core audience wants um, as that's going to be key to really knowing like, where can people even find you? You know, I think that's really important to people in the Caribbean. There's so much talent there, but sometimes their digital presence is not on the internet. You know, it's more mm -hmm. so like a local thing and word of mouth, which is great. Mm -hmm. That's the best form of marketing, but how do you expand outside of that? And that's mm -hmm. where you're going to have to be involved digitally as in building a website, building a platform, having some type of app, having something that pinpoints you in the digital space because now everyone's leaving their digital footprint everywhere. So if mm -hmm. you don't have a digital footprint anywhere, how can I even know about you to find you to support you? So I think that's really vital to have. And then what's, what I think is really setting people apart now to trickle into the to NFT, people now are using emerging technologies to really set their digital footprint. Um, and that's important because the emerging sex, se the emerging technologies are setting you aside from the from the rest of your competitors or setting you aside from everything else. So like for the NFTs, you know, and for those who don't know, that is non fungible tokens. Um, it basically means that like the asset is replaceable. Um, you know, like for like I said, you can replace a hundred dollar bill. A hundred dollar bill is a hundred dollar bill. Uh, with cryptocurrency, it is irreplaceable. You can trade them off for one another, but uh, the NFT is is non replaceable. So you know, it's more so lines of code on a blockchain ledger that reflect that reflect ownership of an asset, both physical and digital. You digital, you own that. Um, and I think that's really important for like artists or like an artist in the Caribbean because they can always go back to that of saying, this is, this is my ownership of this. And he's going to always have that digital ledger of he created this. 
And the person, yeah. yep, it's Stamp. He created this and mm -hmm. this person purchased it and it is on a digital ledger and that is there and it's not replaceable. You know, and uh, smart contracts as well, I think it's critically important in terms of from a transactional point of view, how can the Caribbean tap into a sale or, and the owners, of course, tap in and, and, and get the licensing. So it, it, it evolves from a licensing, um, you know, a licensing for life in, in very layman's terms, right? It's beautiful. And it, it provides a stream of income, from my understanding, yes. that is. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, so I, I wanted to, and I, you know, I've been scrolling through your, your Instagram page and I keep seeing the recurring word um, pivoting, right? So how do we pivot in these kind of, um, these this, this time where, there is a lot happening and, uh, and a lot of information um, coming to us. So one, I would ask you a question about pivoting. And then also, I want to ask you a question about how it is that we filter some of this stuff. Because all these things, you know, today, we've talked about several things. You know, we talk about Ether. We talked about Dogecoin. We've talked about um, now um, NFTs, right? How do we filter this information to actually pivot in this time, you know, and I suppose that this technique can be used, obviously, in the in the crypto space, and also just generally with us using the different um, tools for um, our digital brand. So, how how would you suggest that we pivot? You know, with all these things coming at us. So I I, I know, and it's uh, everybody seems like they want to take advantage of all these opportunities, um, which sometimes isn't the best. And the best way I feel like of pivoting is figuring out which one of these opportunities align best with your end goal. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? And really do the pros and cons of each. So, you know, for example, if you're not really selling art or looking to sell like a ownership of something, it's no need to take a part as NFT. Like, you know, that that's not an opportunity for you at the moment. Now, NFT could expand, but that's not an opportunity to explore. So it's really doing your research to know which one of these opportunities will best suit your company, your brand, which one is going to help you grow. How can you disrupt the space as well, too? Because that that could be uh, a really a game changer of, OK, so like right now, art is disrupting the NFT space. But I'm pretty sure there's someone right now trying to figure out how to disrupt the NFT space with some other type of form of uh, monetization. So, yes. you know, um, really figuring out how you can disrupt some of these spaces and mm -hmm. then how can you align yourself to pivot to brand with, with what these opportunities are. Yeah, um, I know that you deal with a lot of brands, large brands, you worked with um, the New York Times, you know, what are, what are your top two findings when businesses come to you and they say, I would like to achieve my, my goal? What are the common problems that you, have, you will find repeating itself time and time again? Oh, wow. Being honest, <laughs> not having the proper people in place. Ah, people. Team. Okay. Team. team. Yeah. All right. I, I want to, I was thinking, Penny, I want to go deeper into that, right? So, you know, use your word uh, um, um, pivot and the people. I was wondering if it is that you are a fan of Seth Gordon, the hero tribes, the book. Oh, okay. Yes, I am familiar. Then, you, you're familiar with him. All right, sure. So the question I'd ask, and that, that's the natural question, how do we get the right people? How do we build our tribe? Because you're now saying that this is a problem, I guess, that is pervasive among all spaces. How yes. would you suggest to do that? So I'm all I'm really big on building tribes because I do feel like your tribe is who pushes you forward. But you mm -hmm. also just because someone has this amazing degree from Harvard does not mean they know what they're doing. You know, I think the proof is in the work. So really asking people for references, doing seeing what projects they worked on, um, really being able to find someone that's able to hone in on what your what your niche is is important you know i think a lot of the companies that come to me they come and say oh all of our employees are top ivy league college graduates yeah and unfortunately sometimes they're the main ones who bring your company down because they don't do anything 
Um, so, and I think it's really important to have the perfect people, not perfect, but the right people in place who has the experience of what you are, what you're looking for. You know, um, having that Ivy League degree is great, but that's not always, that doesn't get you far. Would you say yes. that plays a, plays a part in that, um, a growth mindset? Because a lot of people who have achieved, um, have the Ivy League on the wall, they watch it and they be like, oh my God, I did this. I accomplished this 10 years ago, five years ago. That's what, where I was. And I'm still there, but time is evolving. Technology is yes. evolving. So I'm, I'm seeing that, guess what? You need a growth mindset. And I could take mm -hmm. somebody from a college, get a growth mindset and they continue growing. <laughs> Not stuck 10 years, 10 years ago in the, in the old degree, yeah? Yeah, that, if that, if that is so true, Melissa, like that you have to have that growth mindset because now people aren't necessarily having to go and get a degree to get the same opportunities. They're going to a boot camp, they're taking an online training course, but they're continually to learn and research and get involved in projects around the things that they're interested in. And then they've built this bundle of experience and then they have this amazing portfolio of work that they've done. And those are the type of people that you need on your team. The people who are genuinely interested in what it is you're trying to achieve and have that growth mindset who's continually wanting to learn and wanting to grow and really interested in seeing your product grow as well too. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was having a conversation last night. I was like, my three, when my daughter becomes three, she's only one right now, right? I'm like, she's going to be spending time on an iPad. I get that. But she's going to be learning to code. You mm -hmm. know, my friends are like, I'm like reaching out. How is she going by the time she's 12 can make some money? You know, yeah. I'm like, possible. So yeah, it's interesting. You just have to have it and teach it from young, 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 yes. young. What, what, did he, what, did he, what are some of these steps that a lay person in, you know, a, a lot of us are, we, we don't recognize that for ourselves, we're, we're building ourselves and building our brand. What are these steps that you would take one through? You know, um, Melissa owns her own business. Um, I, me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm an attorney and I'm building my own brand. How, what are these steps that you would take us through? You know, high level steps. I know that we'll need to pay you for the the the, the um, <laughs> finer details. But you know, if you was you know, Chris, Mel, these are the things that you need to go through. What would you suggest to us? As in, and and then therefore everyone else who's building their their um their platform. Sure. So some of the like high level items that I um always give to my clients. What are your five-year goals? What are your 10-year goals? So I start from the, I start a little backwards. So mm -hmm. I can know exactly what are you trying to achieve? So let's do short-term goals, long-term goals. And then once, I, once those are established, all right, let's figure out the steps that need to get there and who are the people that you need in place. So I start with the research and then saying, all right, these are the type of people you may need in place for this. I may say, hey, you may need a project manager on place to have this grow for you, Mel. Or I may say, hey, hey, George, you may need um, a paralegal in place to help you with these type of things. So I start backwards to say, let's make sure you have the right people in place because that is really key for growth and pivoting, especially um, in this in this current climate that we're in, I think pivoting that is, is, is necessary. Pivots happen sometimes twice a year for companies. It just depends. Like, I feel like, especially now with COVID, companies had to pivot so fast that they didn't pivot properly. So it's like a constant pivot that <laughs> it's just like they're, they're rolling on this, this wheel. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just trying to keep up. So, um, really starting with the groundwork of what are your goals that you're trying to achieve? Then what are the people you have in place? And let's take the steps then to achieve your five and your 10 year goals. Looking over your product plan, because to me, what's really important, what I come in and do, I really help people monetize their pivot. So how are you making money from what you're doing? What, what's your go-to? Because that's the main thing what someone brings me on board for. They want to know how can we make money using technologies? And then that's where I come in and say, all right, this is what you need to achieve, you know, your end goals. And this is how you're going to monetize your business or your practice. So you are, you are the business model lady. You come in, 
you see the product and literally you would identify the streams of income associated with, let's say, one product. So you, you may see two, three different revenue streams from one type, from one product per se. Okay. Yes. Yes, well, but then know. I also know I am very adamant on telling people just because I may see like five streams of income does not mean you focus on those five. You need to okay. start somewhere and just pick one and then those other could be for scalability. Mm -hmm. so we have okay, a question actually, from Diane Henderson. Um, if you don't have any people in place, but you have a plan, how or where do you find or locate these people? So it depends on um, what exactly you're looking for. And I know sometimes bringing on people can be expensive. Um, so even if, if you're looking for like cheaper resources, go to your local colleges, ask for internships. Those sometimes are the people that's going to work the hardest because they need the experience to be able to go out in the world and get a job. And they want to say that they've worked on something of tangible experience that they honestly enjoyed. So reaching out to local colleges for internships for graduate students. Um, also, uh, I, I find people uh, on different tech blogs that I'm looking for, like the, the job boards. Um, I've posted things on several uh, meetup groups that I'm looking for certain developers or project managers. So sometimes really utilizing a community, especially when you don't know where to start, that's where having a tribe, like I reach out to my peers, like, hey, do you know any graphic designers? I just did that yesterday because I'm looking for a graphic designer. Um, I reach out to my networks first because I'm going to take a word of a mouth reference before going to hire a complete stranger. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I know, I know um, you know, and we, we'd go into this, you know, we, we're in the last five minutes of our conversation, unfortunately, but I always like to, um, to educate myself with, with books that guests have read that kind of form their thinking. And then maybe, um, you know, a, a high level point from that book to share with us. And, you know, I always write it down and, and put it on my reading list. What is a book that you would, um, would, would suggest, or more than one book that you would suggest as, you know, Chris, you should go out and read this one. You know, since, <laughs> since uh, <laughs> I, what I will say that that's on my list to get back to, but because okay. everything has been so digital, I've been a podcast person. Okay, pod, then podcast is perfect. Yeah. Podcast is perfect. Um, how, how we built this, that podcast. Okay. That is amazing because these are Fortune 500 companies telling you how they built their companies. And I listen to that a lot. And, you know, you hear these stories and it's just like, oh, wow, you would never think that some of these companies went through all these, these trials and tribulations of how they built their company. Um, I think like Jack Dorsey's story is really amazing, uh, telling how he, how he built Square. You know, he had no idea what he was doing. He made so many mistakes and like banks and things were trying to like sue him because he was not going about things the right way. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, for, for us, the, the consumer eye, we would never know some of these stories. And I also think it's really important to hear these stories because I think sometimes as entrepreneurs, we get so wrapped up of trying to be perfect and making things like, I have to do it this way. I have to make sure it's done. When hearing these stories on that podcast, these people literally just are winging it. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. Winging uh, it. Go ahead. No, I think, yeah, not, you know, there's this quote, I can't remember from who is like, none of us have any idea what we're doing. I think the difference between those who are successful and, and not is that they have a goal. And then with divine intervention, by making the next step, they get, oh, this is the next step that I have to make. And I think that courage, you know, being fearless, and I'm going to steal a line from 50 Cent because, you know, you're from New York. So in his, in his, um, so in his book that he, he wrote with, um, in conjunction with Robert Greene, the, the, the 50th law is to be fearless. Be fearless with the next step. You have to, even though you are, you are scared, 
do not be afraid and make that next step, you know? So I think, um, you know, you're kind of speaking to, you know, with, uh, and I just added that to my podcast list because I am, a, um, I love, you know, when on my drive to work, um, most days, I don't listen to the radio anymore. I only listen to, to um, either um, audio books or to podcasts that would help me get my mind right for the day. Yep. So I'm at it. So that, thanks a lot. You know? Yeah, NPR so, podcast, How I Built NPR, This. How I Built This. I just added that one in. Fantastic. Thanks. Lisa, we have one quick question again um, coming out of Facebook from Sean DeFritas. Um, he says, do you use Fiat currency to purchase digital? Other it's, thing. Go ahead. What are the global central banks saying about all this? Um, I think that the banks now are on board. Um, as we're, we're seeing, it hasn't made like mainstream media, but you're seeing like these global banks are saying like, Hey, they're investing, but they're on like smaller blog articles. They're not like front page New York times. Um, but I think the global banks are realizing, I know, um, JP Morgan Bank as well, the Eastern, the Eastern Caribbean bank, central bank has also fully accepted and di digital, you know, um, Gabrielle is also a part of that. So from this side of the world as well, the central banks are actually making segue for sure. Yeah, they're making segue. I, I feel like because the financial systems are so legacy, they're very old. They're trying to figure out how though, but they are uh, opening. They're trying to figure out that segue of how and they're investing in cryptocurrencies for sure, but they are trying to figure out probably how to update their back end of like their financial systems, like how is this going to work? What is going to be this process? I feel like that's where the bottleneck comes in in the financial world because the spaces is such a legacy space. It's a um, business, yes. You know, old cigar and, and, and your whiskey glass ultimately, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's where the bottleneck is coming in. They're trying to figure out how can they implement it. But I say give them a few more years, it'll be more mainstream from the from global banks. Um, and, and regarding the first question, um, do you use fire currency to purchase digital? No, I, I do not. Um, I'm usually using like my, my cash, uh, US dollars. Uh, to invest and in. I'm on like Gateway, I'm on Robinhood, I'm on Coinbase, or um, I know some crypto miners <laughs> where, wow. I, yeah, I will uh, like give them money for me to invest. Yeah, because they're mining the coins. Jesus, you're going straight to the source, girl. <laughs> you're, you're, just, you're, you're, just, you're just paying for the electricity. It's like, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay $1,000 in electricity. Just give me what you got out of that uh that mining unit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, you're going to have to wrap up here. 30 minutes flew by as always. Oh it's my like God. Yes. Crazy, right? <laughs> I know, I know you have to go and make your money now on those poker tables. <laughs> you go, right? Yes. Because <laughs> yes. Uh, next time, next okay. time it is that you, you might have to, uh, you know, if Mel and, and, and myself are up in New York, you might have to take us down to Atlantic City to show us the ropes on the for tables. For sure, for sure. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic, Lisa. Always a pleasure. Much Always. Love. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me this morning. All right. It was, it was... All right. Thanks, Bye. guys. Thank you. All right.